Hi everyone, welcome to Duality Repair. This is the Carver CM1090 amplifier. Yet another unit sent in by a viewer. This one's got at least four problems that I know of, so let's go through those now. Issue number one is this back face plate seems to be pretty well dented, especially towards the top. Now I think this is purely cosmetic, however I will inspect it thoroughly once I remove the cover. I'll have to fix any electrical issues that may be related and then pop that back cover out as best I can. Issue number two, as reported by the owner, is the CD RCA jacks are damaged. He did supply me with a replacement. So that should work. Let's move to the front. Issues number three and four are both quite a bit more interesting. So issue number three, let's turn this on. You can see both view meters are well lit right at power on. And the issue is after about five to 10 minutes of playing, both view meters intensities decrease uh, to the point where you almost can't see them at all. And issue number four is although the volume knob uh, does work when you rotate it manually, you can see the output here, uh, adjusts accordingly. After about the same period of time, when you use the remote to adjust the volume knob, you can see it rotating there. It's working really well right now. In about five to 10 minutes, it will not work at all. So there's two problems. They may be somewhat related. I assume something to do with heat, but uh, we just won't be sure until we dig in. So I'm gonna turn this off for now. I don't wanna let it warm up too much because the first thing I wanna do is take some measurements to get a baseline. So I've dug into the schematics a little bit and I know the first thing I wanna do is I wanna start looking into the view meter problem. So let's take a look at the schematics. Here are the view meter lamps, PL151 and PL152. They're fed from board HGM810 via connector CN110. So if we look at this board and this connector, it looks like it should be fed 10 volts. However, if we follow that down, it might be 12 volts. I'm not sure which one is correct. I guess we'll figure it out when we open it. Whether it's 10 or 12 volts, it is fed directly from this regulator IC801. This is the regulator that I'm most concerned with. So before we let this warm up and we let the problem present itself, I wanna get a baseline. I'm gonna check the input and output voltages of this regulator. And then after we let it warm up and let the problem present itself, we'll again measure. And uh, by doing this, we'll be able to get a better understanding of where the problem is coming from. Here is our suspect component IC801, and it is a 10 volt regulator. So I'll turn it on now and we'll measure both the input and the output from this regulator. The unit's on, our input is over here, and we have 20.3 volts DC very stable. Let's check the output. 9.9 .9 volts DC. Also for now, very stable. So I'll leave it on. We'll let it warm up. I'll turn the unit back around so you can watch the intensity of the view lamps diminish. And at that point, after 10 or 15 minutes, we'll come back here and we'll remeasure the input and the output of this regulator. All right, the unit has been on for about 15 minutes and the issue has presented itself. So if we look at the intensity of both view meter lamps, we can see they've diminished significantly well beyond what we should consider acceptable. We can also see the fourth issue. If I try and use the remote to turn down the volume, you can see the IR sensor will pick it up every single time I push it. So the IR sensor seems to be functioning at least receiving it properly. But if we watch the volume knob, I'll hold the volume down and it's just barely moving. It should be moving a lot quicker than that. If I leave it on for another five or 10 minutes, it probably will not rotate at all. So our problems are present. Now is a good time to measure the input and the output of that IC. We'll start by measuring the input to the regulator. And we're at 21 volts on the dot, a little bit higher than we were before, but well within the working range. Let's measure the output now. And yes, look at the output, under six volts DC out. No wonder why our lamps have diminished so significantly. The other thing I noticed is that this 10 volt regulator also drives uh, the, the motor that controls the volume via a IC right here. And so it's no wonder that both the lamps have diminished and the function of the volume knob motor has diminished as well. And so what I think is happening is this thing is starting to fail, this, this 10 volt regulator. And if I touch this heatsink, even for just that quick amount of time, 
I can feel it significantly. If I left my finger on there for about a second, I think it would burn my finger. So this I see this regulator is starting to fail. And I think that's causing both of our problems that we're seeing in the front. And I'm willing to bet if I try and adjust the motor right now, the uh, volume motor up or down, we'll see that the voltage will decrease as well. And it's dragging down that voltage even further. So we're at 5.8 volts. So I'm going to push it now. Look at that. That regulator just cannot keep up. If I hold it, it drops down to only 4 volts. It's just working so hard. I'm going to shut this thing off because it's going to overheat eventually and fail catastrophically. Now that we know that that is a problem, I'm definitely going to have to replace this. I don't happen to have any 12 volt or 10 volt regulators. I do have 15 volt and I do have 5 volt, but that's neither of those are going to work. So we'll get this replaced and we'll make sure that fixes that issue. And then we'll want to take a look at the other issues that we talked about before, as well as looking at any other issues that we might want to address, like replacing caps, replacing other regulators, or power transistors. All right, the new 10-volt regulator came in, as did all of these components in front of the unit. So I did convince the owner to replace all of the electrolytics, the other three regulators, as well as the four output transistors. So if anyone's interested, I will put a list of these part numbers together they were all ordered from DigiKey. I'll put these together and put it in the description. For replacements, I'm just going to start with this regulator board here. So this is where we have the 10 volt regulator, as well as the plus and minus 15, and the 5 volt regulator, and then some electrolytics as well. So I'll get all of those replaced, reinstall, and we'll test. All right, the board recap and regulator replacement is complete, and the board is reinstalled. I've been running the unit for about 20 minutes. And although it was working just fine, I noticed that yet again the 10 volt regulator heatsink was too hot, too hot to even touch yet again. So since the only thing that that 10 volt regulator is feeding is the two view meter lamps up here, I knew that those were the actual problem. So I disconnected them. This is the 10 volt connection to the lamps right here. After I did that, just a few minutes later, the heatsink started to cool down. And so confirming my suspicions that the two lamps were the individual problems. We're starting to fail, drawing excess current through the 10-volt regulator, shortening that life. So I do happen to have some replacements right here. They are direct replacements, 12-volt, 50 milliamp lamps. Before I replace them, I'm going to remove this board here that the lamps are attached to, and I'm just going to measure the resistances. I'm guessing that they're far too low on the old lamps compared to the new lamps. All right, so I have the lamp board removed from the unit. Before I replace both lamps, I want to get a read point on the resistance of the new lamp and compare it to the old lamp. So the new lamp has a resistance of about 30.5 ohms, while the old lamp is much lower at only 1.3 ohms. So the new lamp has a resistance of almost 30x that of the old. So it is true that these lamps are just starting to fail. They're almost completely shorted and uh, causing too much current to be drawn through that circuit, overheating and ultimately causing that regulator to start to fail as it gets too hot. So I'll replace both of these lamps, reinstall, and we'll test. Okay, everything is back together. The unit's been on for 10 or 15 minutes, and everything is looking and acting as it should. As expected, the view meter lamp intensity has dropped with the drop in current, but they still look really nice. The volume knob via the remote is working very well. I ran it five or six times back and forth without any drop in performance. And the 10-volt regulator is no longer overheating. I can put my finger on the heatsink for as long as I want. So electrically, this thing is, I would say, repaired. It's functioning as it should, but there's still a lot of work to do, so let's keep going. Here is the CD RCA jack removed from the unit. It's this one right here. It's actually kind of a different shade than the other two. But you can see how it's pretty well cracked. And I think it'll work electrically, it's just fine for now, but eventually I think it'll break off, so it's a good idea to replace it. It's really odd in the back there. You can see it looks like it's almost been melted. I don't know if that was glue to try and patch it, or I, don't, I really don't know what that is. Chunks of white floating around in there? I'm not sure. But the, uh, the replacement that the owner provided is actually has a different uh, pin layout, so you can see it's almost basically inverted. So this new one, although it's really nice, will not work. 
So what I'm going to do is replace this bad uh, RCA set with uh, this good one. And so this one is uh, these three right here. So it's going to be tape out, tape two in, tape two out. So I'm assuming that the owner would much rather have a, a functioning uh, CD RCA jack set uh, rather than a functioning tape one out, tape two in, and tape two out. So I'm just going to swap them. This one looks to be in perfect shape, probably because it's never been used. So we'll just swap these. I'll let him know, obviously, but uh, it should work out pretty well. Okay, I got the two RCA jack sets swapped, and the uh, CD jack should be pretty good now. I also straightened out this back cover as best I could. I'm not a machine shop, so it's not perfect, but it looks much better. Uh, thankfully, the uh, speaker binding posts and the board that they're attached to uh, were not damaged at all when that thing was bent. I would have thought that they would have, but they're, they're just fine. So I reinstalled that as well. So we're looking pretty good back here. The next step is to get the main board here recapped, and then we'll take a look at also replacing the heatsink mounted transistors. All of the electrolytics and power transistors have been replaced. The final sound check is testing out perfectly, so that's it for this one. We'll see you next time.